Hello, my name is Kerry Jensen, and this is a quick look at live bindings in RAD Studio. This is part three of a five part series. In this part, we'll look at the live bindings components. In this part, we're going to look at the classes of live bindings components and look at what they are, how they are used. If we right-click a component and select New Live Binding, we can see that there are three distinct class of components in VCL applications, and there's a fourth class called DB Links available in FireMonkey applications. FireMonkey Live Bindings are described in Part 4 of this series. Let's start with binding expressions. There are two types of binding expressions, the bind expression and bind expression items. The primary difference between these two is a bind expression is a live binding that can have that supports only one expression and that expression is source component to control component. Bind expressions can be can support more than one expression. In part one of this series we examined a bind expression so let's take a look at a, I mean sorry a bind expression item. So in this series let's look at bind expression. There is a bind expression associated with this progress bar. This is used to assign the value of the track bar's position property to the progress bar's position property. And this live binding definition for this expression looks like this. The source control expression is assigned to the control components expression and this is a managed live bindings and as a result we need to notify the expression engine when a change is made. In this case the call to notify informs the expression engine to evaluate any property of the track bar or any expression associated with the track bar in which the position property is referred. The result is that as the track bar changes the position of the progress bar is changed as well. List expressions are more involved. There are two of them. These are bind lists and bind grid lists. Let's look at a bind grid list, which is a more complex list. In this particular example we have about 10 expressions associated with the live binding. The format control operates at the level of the control and is evaluated when the scope associated with the live binding, actually when the live binding becomes activated. In this case this uh, source component for the expression is the bind scope DB which will activate all live bindings associated with it when its object which is a data set becomes active so the bind scope DB actually activates all of the expressions this live binding uh, this live binding will become activated uh, the control expression will make the object visible when it becomes activated clear control, those expressions of which there may be zero or more will be executed or evaluated when the control becomes deactivated. In this case it sets the visible property of the string grid to false. These types of lists also have columns. In this case there is one column for each field that we wish to display in the list. You create additional columns by selecting add. For a given column, there can be a, uh, one of two types of collections. The column format collection is zero or more expressions that are evaluated uh, for the column, column, and the cell format expression is, is zero or more expressions that are evaluated on the cell level. For the column format, we're assigning the field name to the column header. On the cell format, we're assigning the value of the as string property of a source control member, in this case the name, first name field of the bind scope, we're assigning that to the cell contents. The result of this operation 
produces the following effect. The third type of live binding are bind links. And these are demonstrated on the controls we see in this page. There's bind links associated with the scroll bar, with the list box, with the string grid. And we can see that there are four types of link live bindings. A bind link binds an editable control with editing that is bidirectional, that is, data from the data set that the DB scope or the bind scope DB points to can populate the control and changes made to the control can be posted back to the to the uh, data set. The bind position allows controls to maintain position with respect to the position in the data set that the bind scope DB points to. And if it's a bidirectional control, in other words, like this scroll bar, then we can uh, even control the position in the data set with that bind position. Bind links and bind, um, bind link list links and bind grid links are bidirectional controls. And in this case, I only have one control, the screen, string grid, that is editable. So let's look at that bind link. And here we have it, the grid link string grid. It's very similar to the, the list link that we saw uh, a moment ago in that we have format control, clear control collections that control at the control level. We also have columns and we have cell format or column format and cell format. There are three collections here, however, that are new. Pause control allows the control to be updated when there's changes to the the data set. So for instance, the bind scope DB being the source component, the recno of the data set to which it points affects the row position in the string grid. And this is assigned to control. Pause source goes the other way, assigned to source, where the role, row of the string grid affects the record number in the data set. Cell parse is how we get the data from the uh, control to the data set. And these first two control or these first two columns are non-editable. Uh, this particular column is showing the record number. Uh, that's obviously not something that you would edit directly. Uh, in this case we get full name and if you look at this this um, cell format uh, expression we are assigning a concatenation of the first name field to the last name field to the cell. That also is not editable. But in the city column we actually do have we're getting the value of the of the uh, city here in the cell format. We're getting the value of the city field and putting into the cell, and that is editable. So in this case, we have a cell parse. Now this is a collection of zero or more expressions, and in this case, we have a single expression, and we're using the bidirectional method select text, which with respect to a string grid refers to the cell contents and we're assigning it to the as string property of the source member name in this case the city field so let's go ahead and see how that works okay so we can see here as we navigate and it doesn't matter which control because the the links allow this bidirectional navigation we have navigation here of our uh, of all of our controls. Now this is a simple DB grid uh, hooked up directly to the data set so we can kind of see what's going on and in this case we have an editable field and if I post that change we see the update is uh, uh, made to not only this control but we see it right here in the DB edit as well. Thank you for joining me today in this quick look at live bindings. For additional information, visit www.embarcadero.com slash rad in action slash live bindings. There you'll find the replay of my webinar, Visualizing Live Data with Live Bindings in Rad Studio. You'll also find a link to my paper, Live Bindings in Rad Studio, as well as links to the other videos in this Quick Look series. For information about the current Delphi Developer Days Tour, you can visit DelphiDeveloperDays.com. For information about my latest book, Delphi In-Depth Client Datasets, visit JensenDataSystems.com slash CDSBook.
Finally, you can contact me at cjensen at jensendatasystems.com or follow my blog or follow me on Twitter where I tweet about Delphi topics several times a week.